And welcome to Staff Gymnasium on the campus of Brockton High School in the City of Champions for this BCA Sports presentation of Lady Boxers Basketball. Tonight, the Lady Boxers welcome in the Dartmouth Indians to Staff Gymnasium. Peter Zimbor here courtside, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Mark Asselon. Brockton enters this game with a record of five wins, five losses. Dartmouth with a slightly better record, eight wins and three losses. Brockton, as you can tell by their record, having a so-so season thus far, Mark. Yeah, and this game today is very important for the boxers because a win today will make them break that 500, um, po 500 points um, point. So it will be very important for the boxers to come out with a win t tonight. Brockton clearly would like to be above 500 as opposed to at 500 or sub 500. Starting five for the Lady Boxers as we're just to about set to get underway. Number four, Giannacia Silva-Moore. Number 11, Chanel Melton. Number 22, Tatiana Diaz. Number 23, Chantel Jordan. And number 35, Aliyah Brito. Noticeably absent from the starting five as Chantel Jordan hits a two-point jumper. Noticeably absent is Christian McDuffie, who's been out for about six weeks now, nursing a shoulder injury, which he got in the game we covered against Quincy. Starting five for the Dartmouth Indians, who have the ball right now. Number four, Lauren Pires. Number 10, Nicole Simmons. Number 15, Ali Ponce. Number 21, Colby Brooks, and number 33, Morgan Gidley, as the Lady Boxers lay it in and have a four-point lead with 7.24 left to go in the first quarter. That was number four, Silva Moore for Brockton, laying it in. Dartmouth puts their first bucket up, 4-2 Brockton, seven minutes, 15 seconds to go. Brockton coming down there under the court. Tatiana Diaz with the ball. Quick pace thus far as Brito down low tries to get it over to Jordan into the hands of a Dartmouth player. Jump ball is called. Possession arrow points in favor of the Dartmouth Indians to score around 7.06 left to go in the opening quarter. Well, Peter, one thing that stood out to me so far is the, the energy that the Lady Boxers are bringing right now to this game. They're a very energized team, and that right there is also helping them. I see nothing. Ponce with the ball for Dartmouth, looking around at her options, gets it over to Lauren Pires. Pirates dishes over to Colby Brooks from the free throw line. No good. Rebounded by the Indians. One bounce puts it up. No good. Puts it up again. No good. Brito with the rebound for the box as she gets it over to Giannacia Silva Moore. Find Chanel Melton in the corner. Back out to Silva Moore to Chantal Jordan in the corner to Diaz. She'll shoot the jumper. No good. Rebounded by Dartmouth, it's Nicole Seamus with the grab. Surrounded by White Shirts, lays it up, no good. Brockton with the rebound coming back down their end of the floor. It's Melton, Melton inside the paint, up and in. 6-2, Brockton on top, 6-10 to go in the opening quarter. Third chance opportunity for Dartmouth, and Morgan Gidley puts it off the glass and then cutting the deficit to two. 6-4 Brockton on top. Diaz with the ball for Brockton. Tries to lay it in on her own and is successful. 8-4 Brockton. Diaz just went right through a lot of green shirts to the basket. Well, Peter, Brockton played um, this Dartmouth team on Friday. Do, do you have any word on how they did against them on Friday? Brockton did play Dartmouth in Dartmouth on Friday. That would be good to know. Yeah. Both teams well acquainted with one another. It's always easier when you play an opponent the second time. You already know what their strength and what their weakness is, and you can use it to your advantage. It'll go both ways for both teams. We were calling the boys' game against Dartmouth that same night here at Staff Gymnasium. And that was Brock a very exciting game, also. Brockton High emerged victorious in that contest. Tatiana Diaz with the ball for Brockton. Over to Giannacia Silvermore. To Jordan. Loses it. Chan Chanel Melton picks it up. Puts it up. No good. Rebounded by Brito. Aliyah Brito. Short jumper. Connects. Brockton hits double digits for the first time. 10-6. Boxes on top. 425 to go in the first quarter.
Tatiana Diaz dishes out to Chanel Melton and one thing with the buster to make it play with a lot of aggression and energy. So all that right there is all positive things that they could use, you know, to come out with a win tonight. Diaz called, I believe, for a charge. 10-6 Brockton on top. Four minutes to go in the opening quarter. Once again, Peter Zimbor and Mark Asselin. Courtside calling the action. Nice deflection by Gianasia Silva Moore, rebounded by Dartmouth. And Chanel Melton comes up with the basketball for the Lady Boxers. Melton from around the free throw shot, short jumper. Boxers up 12-6. 3.35 remaining in the first quarter. Nice take, Alex. And where's the weak side? So Giannisha Silvermore at the free throw line for Brockton as they lead 12-6 with 3.07 remaining in the opening frame. And Silvermore's first of two at the free throw line is good. Well, Peter, one thing I've always agreed with is that um, a, some, a famous show, Friday Night Light. I don't know if you ever heard of it. So, yes. Yeah, and um, one of the lines from that show was Coach Eric Taylor, um, who was one of the characters in the show, was that clear ass, full heart, won't lose. And what he meant by that is that, you know, if you play with emotion, you play smart, there's no way you're going to lose. And right now, the Rockland girls basketball team, they're doing all that. They play smart basketball, they play with some emotion. And right now, I think that's the reason why they have the lead right now. Well, it's Dartmouth's head coach, Jeff Hoyle, who was forced to call the timeout with his team down by seven. Brockton on top, 13 to six, with 3.05 remaining in the first quarter. And as Jeff Hoyle, head coach for Dartmouth, talks things over with his troops, head coach for Brockton, April Dingwell, does the same with her players. Dingwell assisted by Stephanie Savas and David Ray. Takes it to the hole for Dartmouth. 13 to eight, Brockton on top. 2.40 to go in the opening quarter. Diaz with the ball for Brockton. Chanel Melton to Giannisha Moore, and she gets called for traveling as she steps into the perimeter. And one thing the Brockton boxers are differently from the last time we saw them play here is the turnovers. They, um, they've caused them less of those, and that also is a helping factor. Gotta go ball side. Hey Riley, you can't go behind the D. You gotta cut face, okay? Go, 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 go. Hitch cup. We're good. Short jumper by Dartmouth, no good. Rebound by the Dartmouth Indians. Morgan Gidley puts it in for two. Brockton's lead at 3, 13 to 10. One minute, 40 seconds left to go in the quarter. Tatiana Diaz to Giannisha Moore. She'll shoot for three, no good. And rebounded by Gidley for Dartmouth as the Indians move the ball up the floor. It's Nicole Simas with the ball, puts it up, no good. Gets a rebound up again, no good. And gonna be out of bounds off of 
Dartmouth Brockton ball and Daliana Montero checks into the game. Dominique Coley, who was in the game for Brock, and takes a breather. And foul called against hey, Leah Brito for Brock, and this is going to send number 15, Allie Pomp, to the free throw line for Dartmouth. Brock up by 1, 13 to 12. 27.1 seconds left to go in the first, and Dartmouth with an opportunity to both tie and take the lead here late in the first quarter. And the score will remain the same. Diaz with the ball for Brockton, puts it up. No good. She gets called for traveling. Diaz will be fouled. She'll go to the line shooting two now. That's number 10 on Dartmouth call for the foul. Nicole Seamus, 3.6 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Diaz was one of the girls um, that was on the team last year, but Brockton ended up um, getting this season. She's from Southeastern. And from what I heard, she had a pretty good career over she at Southeastern. A, she had a fantastic career at Southeastern Regional Vocational Technical High School. It's always great to have an extra baller on the team. I'm sure Coach Campbell, head coach for the girls team at Southeastern, missing Tatiana Diaz's services about now. First quarter comes to a conclusion. Brockton with a one-point edge, 13 to 12 is your score. Once again, you're watching BCA Sports. Peter Zimborn, Mark Asselon calling the action courtside here. Inside Staff Gymnasium, very glad to be here with you inside, Mark, as Temperature is rather frigid and cold outside. Yeah, man, it's very cold outside, and you know, playing football over the, um, this year, the playoff game when we played over at Weymouth, and it was snowing like a blizzard out there. So if those, I always tell the indoor sport players, you guys have it way easier than us. You guys got the warm heat. Sure, once you get to the collegiate and NFL level, there are times when there are players on teams jealous of teams like the Colts and the Vikings who play in domes. domes yeah I'll be jealous too <laughs> but you know it's a disadvantage also going away inside those domes because you know it's so loud in there <laughs> I think football should be played outdoors though yeah, I, don't me know too, how, I don't know how I'd feel about that a friend of mine's from Minnesota and talks about going to Minnesota Twins games they play in a dome as well said the atmosphere is just weird yeah it he is says, you go to Fenway and you appreciate baseball more well, Fenway is just one of the authentic um, baseball stadium that, you know. It's been around for 100 years. It's, yeah. it's as authentic as they come. Second quarter begins. Chantel Jordan, short jumper, no good. She gets her own rebound. Actually, Melton comes up with it, puts it off the glass, and then Brockton up 15 to 12. One thing I love with the ladies' boxers right now tonight is the fact that they're following their shots. You know, Chantel Jordan, she shot that ball, missed it. She followed through right after so she could get the offensive re rebound. They're a very alert team tonight. Oh, nice shot. Let's go, defense! 
Dartmouth cuts Brockton's lead to one. 7.22 left to go in the half. Diaz over to Melton. Melton off the glass and in. Peter, I think it's fair to say it's two even teams playing right now because you always see they go back and forth with each other. Brockton has held the lead for much of this first half, but Dartmouth has not been too far behind. One point at the moment. Diaz over to Silva Moore, to Chantal Jordan, to Aliyah Brito, dishes it outside to Diaz for three. No good. It'll be falling into the hands of Dartmouth. Short jumper by the Indians gives them the lead. That is Riley McDonald, 18-17, Dartmouth on top. And Peter, before the game, I was sitting with, with the Brockton girls um, basketball players. They told me Riley McDonald, number 25, she has a very pretty good jumper. Brockton retakes the lead, 19-18, 6-12 left to go in the half. Both teams trading leads here early in the second quarter. Ponce off the glass and in, and once again, Dartmouth leads. This game of Pong back and forth continues. Diaz with the ball for Brockton. Over to Chanel Melton. Melton looking around in the corner for Giannation Moore. Over to Diaz. To Chantel Jordan on the line. No good. Rebounded by Dartmouth. That's Seamus coming out with the ball. Gets it over to McDonald. Puts it up. No good. She'll draw a foul. She'll be going to the line to shoot two. Five minutes and 40 seconds left to go in the first half, and that call goes against Brock and Chanel Melton. Well, Peter, that right there was one of the necessary fouls. They'll call that a good foul. Couple substitutions for both Brockton and Dartmouth. Top Tina Diaz checks out as Daliana Montero checks in. Stop, stop. Fantastic job by the Lee Brockton with the offensive rebounds tonight. So with Brockton trailing by three, Giannisha Silva Moore heads to the free throw line to cut the deficit. 5-17 left to go in the half. Melton with the steal. And she's going to draw a foul called against number four for Dartmouth, Lauren Pires. And Chanel Melton heads to the free throw line. 24 20, Dartmouth is on top. 438 left to go in the opening half. Get the ball. I can't have one. Let's go. 
Silvermar puts it up and in. Brockton cut the deficit to 124-23. 3.52 left to go in the opening half. Nicole Siemens bringing the ball up for Dartmouth over to Colby Brooks. That was a great block by Snow Melton right there. And Melton comes up with the ball following that block. Dishes it to Chantel Jordan from the outside. No good. Rebounded by Dartmouth. Quickly coming down the other way is Seamus. And she'll put it up. No good. And we've got a whistle. That was quite a uh, flagrant foul by number 33 from the Dartmouth team. And... With that, Brockton enters a bonus situation. 17 fouls against Dartmouth. And Giannasia Silva Moore will head to the free throw line with an opportunity to both tie and regain the lead for Brockton. Foul called against Dartmouth's Colby Brooks. Yeah, Colby Brooks basically pulled uh, Moore's um, rip by the wrist to slow her down. I'm guessing the speed was a little too much for her right now. Missed shot by Brockton, rebounded by Melton. She put it up and in. Brockton leads by one, 25-24. Three minutes and 24 seconds left to go in the first half, and head coach Jeff Hoyle for the Dartmouth Indians calls a timeout with his team, trailing by one. Now, you're a big football fan, Mark. Obviously, you played for the Brockton Boxers. Super Bowl appearing team this year. Thoughts on the New England Patriots loss to the Baltimore Ravens on Sunday and the upcoming Super Bowl between the San Francisco 49ers and the Baltimore Ravens? Well, football's a four quarter game, and the Ravens obviously played four quarters, and the Patriots just played a half. And also, I think the reason why the Ravens was able to do that, like I told you, um, the whole emotional aspect that the Ravens have is the reason why they won that game. And there's no doubt in my mind that the Ravens will win the Super Bowl. I just, you San Francisco does have a wonderful team, but this is, you know, with the emotional high, and the Ravens also is a great team. There's no way that I don't think San Francisco is going to win. I'm pulling for San Francisco. Baltimore is a hard team to root for. Well, you're a Patriots fan? I'm a Patriots fan, but beyond that, they're a hard team to root for. Well, you know, I, I don't think so, because... Like I told you, their defensive team and their defensive quarterback is retiring this year. So, you know, Ray Lewis is that team emotionally. <laughs> See, they're a hard time to root for because I, like many people, believe that Ray Lewis had something to do with the murder of two people and paid the family off. Hey, my English teacher brought that up to me today. And uh -huh. I just, uh, to see the guy go off into the sunset with a Super Bowl ring and treated like a hero in Baltimore, I think, is blind fandom. Yeah, my, my, a lot of people have a hard He's time a following that. Dharma three takes the lead, 26-25. Just over three minutes to go in the second quarter. The year following those murders, he actually won a Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with the kind of world we're living in, you know, as long as you're doing a beautiful thing, athletically, people seem to forget you know, your wrongdoing. Short jumper by Dartmouth's number 25, Riley McDonald, and Dartmouth has a three-point edge, 28-25. Satiana Diaz with the ball over to Genesha Silva Moore for three, no good. Follows a shot, gets a rebound, tosses this one up, no good, rebounded by Dartmouth. I gotta tell you, Peter, I love um, Jen, um, Silva Moore's aggression right after her sh shots, how she follows through with it. Chanel Melton with the ball for Brockton to Diaz. Keeps it inbounds by giving it to Melton. She gets called for traveling down the ball. Beyond Ray Lewis, Byron Pollard, probably the dirtiest player in the NFL. Oh, yeah, that hit um, they had on Stephen Ridley was, you know, head-to-head -head contact, and the ref didn't even call nothing about it. Helmet to helmet, knocked them unconscious, but that's just the, that's just the icing on the cake for him. Um, do you know if they, um, he got fired for that hit? To my knowledge, he is not just yet, though he did complain about Tom Brady's slide. He wanted Tom Brady to be to be fine for that, sticking his leg up. It almost looked like a karate kick. Yes, I'm definitely pulling for the 49ers in yeah, this game. Yeah, if, you know, can 49ers have an amazing offense, amazing defense. Uh, 
the, you know, the odds are, t um, they have every re you, uh, you have every reason to believe that they're gonna win, but it's just, I think the the difference, I think it's gonna be a close Super Bowl game, and the difference is gonna come down who wants it more. It's gonna be interesting also brothers coaching against each other. Jim and John Harbaugh. Number 15, Allie Ponce for Dartmouth. Puts her team up by 5, 30 to 25, under a minute 30 to go in the first half. Rito down low for Brock and cuts the deficit to three. It is important for Brock to not to let that game get away from them. Tatiana Diaz with the bump trying to make the steal. They're going to call it for the foul. Crowd upset with the call. Good call by the official, however. You know, I've always been a Jim Harbaugh fan. Jim Harbaugh, head coach for the 49ers, dating back to his days as quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts years ago. They should have been in the Super Bowl in 97 against the Dallas Cowboys. People forget that if instant replay had existed then, the final touchdown of that game that sent Pittsburgh to the Super Bowl in the AFC Championship game against the Colts, Cordell Stewart, his foot was out of bounds. So uh, by today's standards, he, the Colts would have won the Super Bowl. It could have changed history. See, the thing is, I was just a baby at that time, so I don't remember that game. I don't, I don't really have any football memories until that 2001 Patriots football team. I remember coming into school the next day, exhausted, and videotaping school elections here at Brockton High in the okay. old TV studio with Mr. Buba, and I was exhausted. <laughs> So I was a freshman in high school, I believe. In high school, all right. Do you think the Tom Brady and uh, Bill Belichick um, era will go back to another Super Bowl? I do. I do believe they will. Less than a minute to go in this game, 31-27. Uh, scratch that, make it 31-29 as Brockman cuts the deficit to two with 45 seconds to go. Defense! Number 33 for Dartmouth lays it in. Morgan Gidley, 33-29, less than 30 seconds remaining in the first half. Giannisha Silvermore for Brockton. Outside the perimeter, taking a look at her options, gets it over to Chanel Melton. Melton back to Silva Moore. She'll shoot. No good. And that'll go out of bounds off Brock and Dartmouth ball. 12.7 seconds remaining in the half. Donald. First half comes to a conclusion with Dartmouth on top as they bull ahead by seven points. 36 to 29 is your score. And as the first half ends, Dartmouth with their biggest lead of the game, Mark. Yeah, and like I told you before, uh, Riley McDonald's, who just made that shot, you know, she has a beautiful jumper. And this game has been a pretty close game. Both teams are playing very good basketball, well-coached game. Even the referees are not doing that bad of a job. So, so far, you know, it'll be right. interesting to see who comes up top in the fourth quarter. 36-29, Dartmouth on top over Brockton as we reach halftime. We'll step aside for a quick break. Second half action after this. What if a disaster strikes without warning? What if life as you know it has completely turned on its head? What if everything familiar becomes anything but? Before a disaster turns your family's world upside down, it's up to you to be ready. Get a kit. Make a plan. Be informed today. Learn how at ready.gov. And we're back here at Staff Gymnasium. Second half action between Brockton and Dartmouth. Dartmouth leads Brockton as we enter the second half. 36 to 29, Peter Zimbor and Mark Asselin courtside here at Staff Gymnasium. And Dartmouth is going to extend their seven point lead to nine to open up the second half. 38, 29, 7, 42 left to go in the third quarter. Brockton trying to answer back Tatiana Diaz. 
inadvertently passes the ball right into the hands of the Dartmouth Indians, and Dartmouth with an opportunity to sort of open up a little bit further here in the early goings of the second half mark. Yeah, like I told you before, Peter, it is very critical and important for Brockton not to let this game get away from them. Because, hey, this Lady Boxer team have had trouble coming back in, in the past, so it's very important for them to keep the game closely and even stay in the lead. Five seconds on the shot clock for Dartmouth. They just throw it up, doesn't hit backboard or rim, so shot clock nearly expires, and it does. Shot clock violation, Brockton ball. Hopefully Brockton could make the most out of that right now. Chanel Melton with a short jumper. Brockton cuts the deficit back to 7, 38, 31, 6, 42 left to go in the third quarter. And trying to bring it in all alone is Ponce for Dartmouth. Comes up with a steal after she loses it. Ultimately, Seamus is going to have the ball down low. Or that was Pyra's actually lays it in. And we've got some substitutions for Brockton. Montero checking in for Brockton. Ali Ponce is from, um, from Dartmouth is down right now because she tried to save the ball and ended up hitting the bench. So when, when Ponce actually stole that basketball from Brockton and kept it inbounds, dish it off to a teammate, we weren't watching, but she must have made contact with the bench, as you mentioned, Mark, as she is down on the floor clearly in some pain. Six minutes and 32 seconds left to go in the third quarter. 38 to 31, excuse me, 40 to 31. Dartmouth Indians are on top. And you know what I love right now is how Chanel Melton is taking lead as a senior captain, you know, making sure that her teammates are staying in the game with her, making sure she's making sure they're keeping that emotion, that energy going up, because they're going to need a lot of that to come up with this one tonight. It was pretty impressive how Baltimore's <clears throat> defense was able to keep this um, this Patriots explosive offense with only, what, 17 points, 13 points the whole game? That was the case last Sunday as the Ravens defeated the Patriots in the AFC Championship game. Patriots, unfortunately, will have to wait until next year. How many years does Tom Brady have left for him? I think him and Belichick, that duo has between three and five years in their tandem remaining. Uh, after Brady retires, you think Belichick's going to retire or he's going to keep coaching? I don't know. I don't know. Time will tell. takes a seat on the bench. Hopefully she is okay. 6.32 remaining in the third quarter. 40 to 31, Dartmouth is on top and Brockton will be inbounding the ball. And it's Chantel Jordan bringing the ball down the floor for the Lady Boxers. Aaliyah Brito on the rebound, puts it up and in. Brockton trails by seven again. 40 to 33, just over six minutes to go in the third quarter. Dartmouth coming down the floor. And Brockton nearly coming up with the steal. Byers down low for Dartmouth, up no good. Chantal Jordan with the rebound. To Aaliyah Brito, short jumper, no good. Rebounded by the Indians and with just one boxer to beat, it is number 21 for Dartmouth laying it in, Colby Brooks. Hands, 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 see cutters, watch ball. 11-7 in. 
Melton with the ball for Brockton to Brito. Brito's being called for traveling. Or no, she won't. And it's gonna be on number 33 for Dartmouth, a personal foul against Morgan Gidley. Head coach Jeff Hoyle for Dartmouth, much like myself, thought a traveling call was forthcoming. Diaz with the ball for Brockton. Really timing that shot if she was gonna take it. Cross court pass to Melton inside the paint. Turn around off the glass, no good. Rebounded by Pires for Dartmouth. That was a beautiful catch. <laughs> uh, and almost had to foul with it. <laughs> Kobe Brooks, get back here. Hurry up. So foul called against Dartmouth. Tatiana Diaz heads to the free throw line. Sophomore in her first year at Brockton High as she played. Oh, wow, she's only a sophomore. Yeah, she played as a freshman starting on the varsity team for the Southeastern Hawks last year. Making the transition quite well from Division Three to Division One this year. I honestly thought she was a junior. Hey, that's pretty impressive. Every time a team plays the man-on-man -man defense on Brockton, offensively, the Lady Boxers do good. You know, it's only when they have the zone defense that they start to have tr trouble offensively. So perhaps one-on-one, -on -one, Brockton can out-maneuver and out-athlete their opponents, but when the teams use that zone defense to gang up on them, that is their weakness. 46-33 as Dartmouth has their largest lead of the game. And they extend upon that lead 47-33. So a 14-point edge for the Dartmouth Indians with 4.09 left to go in the third quarter. Tatiana Diaz with the ball for Brockton. Over to Chanel Melton. Back to Diaz. She'll shoot the three. No good. Rebounded by Melton. Off the glass and in. And that was very beautiful footwork by Chanel Melton. Coach Jeff Hoyle for Dartmouth calls a timeout. 12 point lead for the Dartmouth Indians, 47 to 35. Brockton down with three minutes and 23 seconds left to go in the third quarter. And Brockton has switched up to a more aggressive press man on their defense. Hopefully, you know, they could create some turnovers out of that and <clears throat> make points out of those turnovers so they could come back in this game. And like I told you, this game is very crucial for them to get back above the 500 point.
Good look by number 21 for Dartmouth with the steal. No good, but Brocken coming down with the ball. Giannisha Silvermore tries to pass it to Tatiana Diaz just out of her reach and out of bounds. Brooks lays it in for two for Dartmouth. 49-35, under 2.40 to go here in the third quarter. Been a big third quarter for the Dartmouth Indians, Mark. Yes, it has. And remember what I told you from the beginning, the lady boxers need to make sure that they don't let this game slip away. If they keep turning the ball over and not making their points, in, that's exactly what will happen to them. But if you think about it also, they're not playing a, hard, a, a bad team. They're eight and three for a reason, so. That's a great move by Chanel Melton to avoid the charge. Chantel Jordan makes it a 10-point game. 49-39, Brockton down. Buck 50 left to go in the third quarter. And number 21 for Brockton is going to get called for the push. Dominique Coley as she attempted to steal the ball. Or at least deflect it to a teammate. I don't agree with that call. I honestly don't think it was an intentional push. It wasn't intentional, but she did it. Well, I guess we could say that. Coley with a nice block. Inside the primitive jumper by Dartmouth's Riley McDonald, 51-39. Indians on top. Cooley's a three-sport varsity athlete for Brockton. You know, in the fall she does volleyball, obviously winter in the bas uh, uh, basketball in the winter, and she's a pretty, I heard she's pretty good at throwing the javelin for track. You're one sport man, Mark. You play football and just football. Yeah, well, you know, I play football. And I kind of want to be a bodybuilder one day, and I enjoy lifting weights. Really? In the offseason, I do a lot of weightlifting. So you want to compete professionally as a bodybuilder? Yes, yes. I, I, you know, even that, even if it's not my main job, I just want to do it something. It's just something extra I do on the side. Coach Colombo, good about letting ex-players still use the Brockton High weight room. Yeah, that's very. You summertime. know, before I came here, I, I was actually in the weight room. So it's all. You know, you got guys from class of 2005, like Junior Penn, all those guys. You know, they come here all the time to work out. So you know. <laughs> the football team is really a family, and those coaches are like our fathers. They let us come back anytime, if, you know, if we need any help, if anything. And I was, and, you know, as a player, you always look up to things. You have a t-shirt, you can show off your talent to all those guys I was before you. That's all you as a freshman. Three-pointer by Giannisha Silvermore makes it a single-digit game again, 51-42. Dartmouth up by nine, 51 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Can Brockton mount a comeback in the fourth quarter will be the question. Hey, I would not be surprised if they do because they play smart basketball and don't turn the ball over. They will be able to do that. <laughs> 
And down low, Giannisha Silvermore again for Brockton. Seven point lead for Dartmouth, 51-44. 25 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Crowd's really starting to get into it. You know, I don't know if you realize that, the Lady Boxers, uh, they had some new uniforms this year. And at first, when they first got them, I got really jealous <laughs> that they got the new uniforms. New uniforms, new court here at Staff Gymnasium. And new score, Chantel Jordan, helping turn the momentum in the Lady Boxers' favor as the third quarter will be coming to a conclusion. One second to go, could she get the shot off? She does, she misses. But as the third quarter ends, Brockton, who was once down by as much as 14 in the third quarter, finishes off the period down by five, 51 to 46 to score. Dartmouth with the lead, eight minutes of basketball left to be played. As you know, the Brockton Lady Boxers have shut me up because I honestly did not think they would be able to start scoring points and start their way up to a comeback. And right now they're doing a pretty good job. You know, they're forcing turnovers and they're capital capitalizing off those turnovers. Very interesting fourth quarter. <laughs> to 26, Dartmouth on top. Brockton gets the ball to begin the fourth quarter. Giannisha Silvermore over to Chantal Jordan to Diaz for three, no good. And that's gonna go out of bounds. Diaz the last to touch it, so it'll be Dartmouth Indians basketball. Yeah, I love Diaz's effort to try to keep that ball in bound right there. And it's always a beautiful thing to see players make that extra, you know, that extra push. You know. Because the boxers are playing right now, so you know it's working out for them.
Darmouth with the lay in 53, 46, 7, 10 to go in the game. Diaz to Chanel Melton, short jumper connects. Energy level in the gymnasium tonight is very high, we gotta admit. Good atmosphere for the sparse crowd that has come out on a Tuesday evening for this varsity girls basketball game. And you know, having a great crowd always has a good effect on how you play. Diaz down low, makes it a three-point game. 53-50, 6.20 left to go. And double dribble called against Dartmouth. Brockton will get the ball. One possession game, Brockton potentially could tie it here. So in defense by the boxers right now. Chantel Jordan all alone. And she's gonna draw a foul. She'll go to the line to shoot two. 542 left to go in the game. Brockton trails by three. Melton 0 for 2 at the free throw line, rebounded by Coley, puts it up, no good, keeps it in bounds. Giannacia Silva Moore with the ball. And now she's fouled, she'll go to the line of shoot two. Like I told you already, Peter, you know, I'm just loving the, uh, you know, the aggression that the Lady Boxers are playing with right now, following through after those shots. You no, know, you can tell they really want to win this game. Five minutes and 36 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. That's a two-point game. <laughs> Genesha you know Silvermore tightly guarding the ball carrier for Dartmouth. Brockton comes up with the ball. Jump ball is going to be called as a scramble forward on the floor. Head coach Jeff Hoyle for Dartmouth calls a timeout. Five minutes, 23 seconds left to go in the game. Dartmouth leads Brockton by one, 53-52. With their stamina and with their athleticism, the Lady Boxers are outplaying um, um, Dartmouth right now. And, you know, they're playing with a lot of heart, and, you know, it's just a beautiful thing to see.
Diaz with the steal for Brockton. Rebounded by Gianna Shamor, puts it up, no good. Rebounded by Coley, puts it up, and in. Brockton reclaims the lead, 54 to 53. The first time in the fourth quarter, Brockton's been on top. Melton. Melton has for a pretty good game tonight. Silva Moore with the ball. It was deflected, fell back in her hands. Dartmouth ends up with the ball anyways. It's Brooke Avila with the ball. Gets it over to number 12, Francis Ponce. Colby Brooks with the ball. 56-53, Brockton with the lead. 4-15 remaining in this game. Short jumper by number 34 for Dartmouth, Megan Shirtliff. And we get a one-point game. Brockton on top, 56-55. Four minutes to go here in the ballgame. Janesha Silvermore looking for help. for the lady boxers to remain calm right now to uh, keep playing smart basketball. Rocking up by one again, 58-57, less than three minutes to go. No good, Brockton with the rebound. It's Diaz coming down with the basketball. And Diaz touched from behind by Dartmouth, so she'll be heading, I don't think, to the free throw line. I think this will be one with an inbound from down low. I don't think we're going to let her shoot it. Huh? Yeah, she was not in the act of shooting, so the referees will correctly have blocked an inbound from underneath. You know, I'm pretty impressed with the officials tonight. They have called a pretty good game. Two minutes and 45 seconds left to go in this game. Brockton with the lead, 58 to 57. Take a look at what is on the horizon for the Brockton Lady Boxers following this contest with Dartmouth. They'll be taking on Whittier Vocational Technical High School this Friday before a two-game away stand taking on Barnstable on the 31st of January and Durfee on February the 1st. Friday evening game. Brockton comes back to Brockton for a game against Bridgewater Raynham. And then on the Febu 12th of February, Brockton hosts New Bedford for their final big three divisional matchup of the season before playing the remaining stretch of the season on the road. One month remaining in the season before the postseason begins. <laughs> Of course, the Lady Box is hoping that they'll have a playoff appearance they can extend upon their season. And I honestly think they could, actually. Because they're a talented team, you know, with the injury of, of Christian McDuffie, who's one of their star players.
Yarmouth takes the lead once again, 59-58. 2.14 to go in the game. Tatiana Diaz with the ball for Brockton. Over to Silva Moore. Looking for help inside to Aliyah Brito. Back outside of Diaz. She'll try for three. Off the rim, no good. Rebounded by Dartmouth. And Diaz gets tied up with Riley McDonald for the basketball jump ball. And I think it'll be Brockton ball. You know, Peter, you know what I wish in high school? They actually had a jump ball. You know, may the best guy win it. As opposed to just letting the possession arrow change it back and forth? Yes. It'll be more interesting. Watch the cut! Watch the other cut! A lot of jump balls occur in high school basketball. Jump ball situations, I should say. Probably down south somewhere. Looking for a travel to be called as that ball handle for Dartmouth hit the floor. Tatiana Diaz coming down the floor for Brockton right now as the boxes trail by one, 59-58. A buck 10 left to go in the game. Three-point attempt by Silva Moore, no good. Rebounded by Chantel Jordan for Brockton. Brockton still with the ball. And down low, that is Dominique Coley off the glass and in. Brockton leads by one with a minute to go. 60-59 to is the score. And that pass is going to go out of bounds. That attempted inbound by Dartmouth right out of bounds. Brockton ball and the crowd here at Staff Gymnasium getting excited. Brockton at one point in this game trailed by as much as 14. They now have the one point edge with 52.8 seconds to go. And that's a foul against Dartmouth. Chantel Jordan will head to the free throw line. That'll be a number 33, Morgan Gidley. This is a very exciting game, Peter. You know, came down to it's coming down to the last minute. Hey, yeah, it's about who wants it more right now. As your favorite Ray yeah. Lewis would say. Let's go. <laughs> Box out on this. Colby and Franny, you get shooter. Make sure we box out. Timeout called by Brockton as number four for Dartmouth. Lauren Pires lays it in, giving the Indians the one point lead with 28 seconds to go. So Dartmouth on top, 61 to 60, 28 seconds to go. This game continues to go back and forth. It may come down to who has the final possession.
got another timeout called. Called by head coach April Dingwell. So Brockton still down 61 to 60, 28 seconds to go. To Melton puts it in. Brockton leads by one. 18 seconds to go. 62 61 is your score. Stolen by Dominique Coley over to Tatiana Diaz. And we have a timeout called by Brockton. 62 to 61. Brockton up by one. 10.8 seconds remaining in the game. Oh, Peter, I told you from the jump, man. This game was going to come down to the last minute, and indeed it did, man. Both of the team have no reason to be ashamed of themselves. Whoever comes out on top, both teams work hard, played good basketball tonight. Both teams have 10.8 seconds to work with. Still anyone's game. Brockton will be inbounding from the sideline to begin the next 10.8 seconds of play. You, well, do you think Coach Newell should have called that? Well, should have called that timeout since you know they only would have one left. You know what? One timeout, 10.8 seconds to go. I think they'll be okay. If you're Dartmouth, what do you do here? Hey, Foul. <laughs> you're in the bonus, so Brockton's going to the free throw line. If you do that, no matter what. You know, with the inbound, you could also get a turnover with it. Hey, we gotta be tight! We gotta be tight! Hey, we gotta be tight! Be up! Don't let it in! Don't let it in! Tight! Don't let it in! So, of course, Dartmouth does foul as Brockton inbounds the ball, and Tatiana Diaz goes to the free throw line. She has an opportunity to more or less put the nail in the coffin if she can sink two free throw shots. I got you. Oh, misses her first. Coley with the rebound. And another whistle. Foul called against Dartmouth. That was number 12, Francis Ponce, and Dominique Coley heads the free throw line. Dartmouth is going to try to draw out these final 6.1 seconds as much as possible, as long as Brockton is getting rebounds and making shots to free throw line. Rebounded by Dartmouth. Three seconds. Pyrus. No good. Brockton wins by one, 62 to 61, and a game that came down to the final seconds. You know, that was just a beautiful game played by both teams. You know, it's, it's great to see that a team that, you know, that's the beauty of um, high school sports. You know, you go in, you play your heart out, play a full quarter game, and at the end, shake hands and tell each other, good job. Brockton improves to six and five on the season, so they are now above 500, and Dartmouth falls to eight and four. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access Sports, my broadcast partner, Mark Asselin, I'm Peter Zimbor. The Lady Boxers defeat Dartmouth by one point, 62 to 61, in a thrilling game here at Staff Gymnasium. Until next time, have a good evening.